Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Congress wants to take away Obama's pension after they made shocking discovery. Now, this has to be the best news we've heard in a long time. Congress has now officially put Barack Hussein Obama on notice that his generous taxpayer-funded pension would be taken away if he keeps living like the life of the high-rolling, jet-setting elitist that he thinks he is. It's being reported that Congress is taking a second look at and might be cancelling his $400,000 taxpayer-funded pension. The bill which was introduced while Obama was still in office would forfeit the pension if any former president made more than $200,000 per year. Of course because Obama saw what was coming when it came to his own pocketbook he vetoed it. But under President Trump the reality is different. $400,000 just to give a speech? A speech that most certainly involved the word I at least 60% of the time? Are you kidding me? Come on people, this is a no-brainer. There is no reason why we the taxpayers need to be paying these bums a pension for the rest of their lives. Even presidents who weren't rich when elected to the office leave rich after eight years of cheating and stealing from the hard-working people of this country. Here is more on this via USA Today. Washington, last year, then-President Barack Obama vetoed a bill that would have curbed the pensions of former presidents if they took outside income of $400,000 or more. So now that former President Barack Obama has decided to accept $400,000 for an upcoming Wall Street speech, the sponsors of that bill say they'll reintroduce that bill in hopes that President Trump will sign it. The Obama hypocrisy on this issue is revealing, said Rep. Jason Chaffetz, Republican Utah, chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee and sponsor of the 2016 bill. His veto was very self-serving. Chaffetz and Sen. Joan Ernst, Republican Iowa the sponsor of the Companion Senate bill, say they will reintroduce the Presidential Allowance Modernization Act this month. The bill would cap presidential pensions at $200,000, with another $200,000 for expenses. But those payments would be reduced dollar for dollar once their outside income exceeds $400,000. The issue isn't a partisan one, or at least, it wasn't last year. The bill passed both the House and Senate with no opposition, and no veto threat had come from the White House. So when Obama's veto came one Friday night last July, on the last day for him to sign or veto the legislation, it took lawmakers by surprise. It was the 11th of Obama's 12 vetoes. At the time, Obama argued that the bill would have unintended consequences and impose onerous and unreasonable burdens on former presidents by requiring them to immediately lay off staff and find new office space. Republican leaders did not call up the bill for a veto override, which would have required a two-thirds majority in both chambers. Democrats say they won't necessarily oppose changes. Rep. Elijah Cummings, DMD, the top Democrat on Chaffetz's committee, was a co-sponsor of the original bill. Cummings definitely supports the concept, and if we can work out the technical issues with the bill that arose late in the last Congress, we expect he would strongly support it again," said spokeswoman Jennifer Hoffman Werner. Trump has not taken a position on the legislation. But during the campaign, he said he'd take a close look at pensions for elected officials, especially members of Congress. The first thing I'm going to do is tell you that if I'm elected president, I'm accepting no salary, okay? He said at a town hall in 2015. They get benefits that nobody else can even think about, okay? And they don't like to talk about it. But we'll work on that. Under the Former Presidents Act, the nation's five living former presidents, Jimmy Carter, George H. W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush and Obama, get a pension equal to the salary of a current cabinet secretary, $207,800 in 2017. They also get $150,000 to pay staff, and suitable office space, appropriately furnished and equipped. In 2015, the entire benefit package ranged from $430,000 for Carter to $1.1 million for George W. Bush. With Obama joining the club as of January 20, the 2017 spending bill approved by the House Wednesday contained nearly $3.9 million for all the former presidents through September 30, a $588,000 annual increase. Obama spokesman Kevin Lewis said the former president had no comment on the legislation. Obama has already shown he has considerable potential to raise money in his post-presidential career. He and his wife Michelle have signed a publishing deal for two separate books, which the Financial Times reported was worth at least $65 million. And the Wall Street speech, a health care conference planned by investment firm Cantor Fitzgerald in September, will reportedly net him another $400,000.
President Obama will deliver speeches from time to time, said Eric Schultz, a former White House spokesman who continues to advise Obama. Some of those speeches will be paid, some will be unpaid, and regardless of venue or sponsor, President Obama will be true to his values, his vision, and his record. Obama has said he also plans to use his post-presidency to work on a range of issues through his presidential center in Chicago. On Wednesday, he unveiled the design of that center and said he would donate $2 million to a summer jobs program for Chicago youth. A spokesman for President George H. W. Bush said he does not oppose changes to the law, and expects that Congress will likely take some action. At age 93, he recognizes that any change to the act would have a greater impact on the other former presidents, said spokesman Jim McGrath. For the sake of future occupants of the office, he does think some consideration should be given to the public role former presidents play, and we are told that very positive conversations addressing that and other matters have taken place. The bill would cap presidential pensions at $200,000, with another $200,000 for expenses. But those payments would be reduced dollar for dollar once their outside income exceeds $400,000. I think too many people, including all of the former presidents who are still with us don't fully grasp the notion that we as a nation are for all intent and purpose, broke. And just like they have all told us in the past that we had to live without it's about damn time they start setting an example like in the way President Trump is doing so by donating his full presidential salary. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click, like, and subscribe. Thank you.